So good evening, everyone. Um, this is Catherine Kramer, town planner. Um, I will start with a roll of the commissioners. Um, Barbara Brenneman. Present. Patrick Carrier. Here. Michael Grabulis. Here. Uh, Matt Pogson. Here. Inez St. James. Here. Marcy Schwartz. Here. Scott Halstead. Here. John Vibbert. Here. Keith Vibbert. Here. Thank you. Thank you all. Good evening. This is Barbara Brenneman, Chair of the Farmington Town Plan and Zoning Commission, and I welcome you to our online uh, Town Plan and Zoning Commission meeting, Monday, May 24th, 2021. Begin the meeting with a call to order from Inez, please. Thank you. I didn't see that. Thank you for uh, having it ready, Shannon and company. All right. Town of Farmington, Town Plan and Zoning Commission. Notice is hereby given that the Town Plan and Zoning Commission will hold an online public hearing Monday, May 24th, 2021 at 7 p.m. on the following application. Todd Zavaski application for special permit to raise poultry at 148 Plainville Avenue, R12 zone. Interested parties are encouraged to participate in this online public hearing. The link to this meeting may be found on the Town of Farmington website at HTTP. You got it? Okay. Awesome. Yeah, got it. Thank you. HTTPS colon backslash backslash www.farmington-ct.org dash about dash us dash calendar dash meetings. A copy of this proposal is online at https colon backslash backslash www.farmington dash ct.org backslash government backslash town dash plan dash zoning dash commission backslash public dash hearing dash documents or by calling the planning department at Farmington Town Hall at 860-675-2325. Dated at Farmington, Connecticut, the 7th day of May, 2021. Town Plan and Zoning Commission, Barbara Brenneman, Chair. Thank you, Inez. Welcome. Uh, according to our agenda this evening, we're gonna start with old business, 402 Farmington Avenue, LLC, an application for change of zone from BR and R80 to special innovation zone and a site plan approval for multifamily development on lots 40 and 40B1 Farmington Avenue, also known as 8231 and 9249 Farmington Avenue to the rear of 406 Farmington Avenue. This is the uh, end of a public hearing that was closed on May 10th, 2021. Um, as the commission knows, it's time for, we've agreed that uh, we would make some decisions about this this evening. So if you'd like to have uh, some conversation, uh, this is a good time to bring up anything you'd like to bring up. Please be aware that you may not bring up anything new to the application. Um, Patrick, anything you want to communicate? Well, I mean, at this time, is this is pretty much discussion, right? And I can say how I feel. And yep. Um, okay. Um, yeah. So, I, so I want to start off by um, talking about this application in terms of how much you know time that I put into getting to my conclusion. Um, I spent many hours processing the information, putting myself in Prattling Pond's shoes. Um, <clears throat> I studied the plan and listen to pretty much how the building, how it came about, the placement of the building. Um, I, you know, I, it included quite a few site visits, drive-throughs, um, a walk-through. Um, thank you to the town for that, that was helpful. Um, so I studied trees. Um, I put a lot, of, a lot of time into it. I read the POCD twice at least. Um, so the reason I'm explaining this is because I know only half or I would say one side is going to be happy with my vote. Um, but I also want the other to know that I did not take it lightly. 
Um, so with that said, I broke it up into four categories um, of like how I came to my conclusion. The first one uh, was traffic. So I did this according to, I think it was a neighbor that brought up the percentage of, um, you know, basically the people that were opposed to it, the letters, uh, letters of opposition, you know, which ones were opposed and why. Um, so 62% of those were against the traffic. And I have to say that I've been working in that area for five years. And really, to me, the traffic starts when you take a right on Route 4 going to Unionville or a left on 84 when you get to West Hartford, depending on the time of day. But that area, as it was stated, I mean, it handles the cars. I mean, it's, you know, I never wait. In fact, I'm always trying to find back roads where I'm not supposed to go because, again, the traffic starts on my way home to Unionville. Um, so for that reason, I think that this building, its placement is actually good in terms of traffic. If it was a mile down on Route 4 going toward Unionville, then, you know, it would have an, imp an impact, I think. Um, the second thing um, was the massive building. So 38%, which again, I just wrote these numbers down. I didn't, I didn't, you know, uh, verify them or whatever, but 30, it sounds about right. 38% um, were against the massive building. Um, there was a flyer that was out um, that was showing Anthology. Um, so when I started to look at that, I drive by Anthology. You know, the biggest difference is you see that building right from Route 4, whether you like it or not. Um, it's, op it's completely opposite of this building. This building is set back um, up higher, gas easement, some trees. Um, I think there's a retaining wall there. But anyway, uh, no, that's more to the south, I think. But anyways, um, I, don't, I don't think you're going to see it like you see Anthology. So in no, in, when talking about that, I think this building, again, it, it, the placement's good. Um, and then 27% wetlands. We have a wetlands, um, not department, but a wetlands board, and they went through it thoroughly, and and they ended up voting it through. So I mean, there's not much I could say there. I mean, I, I trust wetlands. Um, the fourth thing is the POCD. When I read through, now there was no percentage on this, but it was mentioned quite a bit. When I read through the POCD, everything, quite a bit of what was in there you know, pointed or at least led me to believe that there is a need for this type of, of complex or apartment building, if you will. Um, you know, there was some mention of like 60 some on percent, 60 some on percent single family homes, um, aging population, you know, that, that are trying to downsize, stay in Farmington. Uh, this I took right out of it, the, the, lack, the lack of higher density, walkable and mixed use town center will hurt, you know, the town's efforts to retain the younger population. That's in section one. Now that, this is not a town center, but, you know, it may, it may, if this is approved, it may attract more mixed use. Um, and maybe this is a little bit of a substitution to a town center. Um, so in that, in that sense, it's good. And then as far as walkable, um, I mean, I believe it's walkable to some, not to all. Um, I know there was some mention of weather, you know, weather, we have it on our phones, we get weather alerts. I mean, people know when it's gonna rain, when it's not. And on those days that it might, they may choose not to. Those that don't walk it will ride their bike possibly. So I do think it fits that. Um, if I live there myself, it would be walkable. Um, so in terms of that, you know, I think it fits the POCD. Um, so, or the intention of the POCD. Um, now, 22% of impacting Prattling Pond Road. Um, so if this building was at the end of Prattling Pond Road, that would be a big deal. Um, if it was at the cul-de-sac or whatever, even a section, but it's not, um, it's a budding Prattling Pond Road, but it's it's not really impacting in, in terms of, of people driving through the neighborhood. So, so in that sense, um, you know, I, I'm okay with that. Um, as far as noise, I really started to think about noise, right? So I live, I live on Tay Mountain and I'm lucky to live in a neighborhood like Prattling Pond Road. So on Sunday afternoon, I sat down, I'm like, you know, what do I hear when I sit here? 
And as I did, the only thing I could hear is my neighbor's lawnmower, which is okay. I'm just saying it was Sunday afternoon. He decided to, he decided to fire his up and what follows that is the leaf blower. So that's, that's loud. Um, and if that wasn't running, I could hear, you know, a little bit of, of um, the center of Unionville, especially the Harleys and stuff like that. So in terms of noise, I don't, I don't see noise. This type of complex, I don't think creates noise. I think they mow the lawn probably during the week. You know, it's one crew, they're in and out. You know, it's not random neighbors um, that can create noise. Um, as far as partying on the balcony or, you know, noise in the center, in the center island there, or whatever you call that, the, the get together in the center of the building. Um, it would have been 146 neighbors, I'm sorry, 145 that would have quieted that one down. Now I believe it would, that we're down to 131, so it would be 130. I don't see noise coming out of a place like that in terms of, in terms of, of people, you know, partying or staying up late. There's just, it would be shut down immediately. Um, car doors, car doors are, I mean, you're not really, I, I just don't see hearing that. When I'm here, I don't hear car doors, you know. I mean, obviously there's not many, but I, I notice my, my neighbor drive in and that's not, that's not really an issue. I think noise, Harleys, in fact, when I did the walkthrough at Prattling Pond Road, the first thing I noticed was Route 4. And then at night when it's quiet, I could only imagine with the hospital right around the corner and the ambulances, oh, no. that's where they go. To me, that's noise. <laughs> now, I think you get used to that noise as well, but I'm just saying, to me, that's noise, you know? So, I again, noise is not an issue. Now, where I struggled, and to wrap this up, is obviously the proximity to the neighborhood, which in particular 42 and 52. Um, that that's the that's the one thing that I again that caused me to drive there so many times. Everything else I can do by looking at the plan, um, and it did concern me for sure, and, and it caused me to to switch which way I was th thinking on multiple occasions, depending on you know how I heard and what I saw and so on and so forth. Um, but with, and this is why I support, I believe it's number nine and number six in the potential or the possible, um, what do you call that? The, the, I got it right here, possible conditions. Um, you know, those are talking about when the buffer's planted. And number nine especially talks about the applicant came in and basically offered to plant 100 14 foot trees. And when I studied that plan, you know, when you look at 52, if, if, I, I, I can read that plan. And when you look at 52, you could even build a little bit of a berm under these trees um, because of the way the, the water flows in the property. You wouldn't be damming anything up. And anywhere you put yourself in that yard, and again, this is my opinion by looking at everything. Um, it really, if, if you put those trees, you, you can really sh uh, cut off the view of that building, not perfectly, I mean, it's not going to be perfect, but you really can from almost anywhere in that yard, um, whether you're in the backyard, just the way I'm looking at it on the screen now, just the way, just the way it's positioned. Um, and they're going to be higher than the other 14 foot trees that they're putting in the buffer, which is on and above our regulation on top of it. Um, it, it really goes a long way. It kind of, it kind of brings the top of those trees closer to the canopy. And I went a lot by the pictures that the town verified and went through to the best of their ability. And I believe that you can really minimize that. So I just want to throw that out there that I, you know, I, I'm in favor of this project. I think it's good for Farmington on every level. Um, uh, and as far as 42 and 52, I believe that uh, the applicant went a long way to try to, you know, make it as, as transitional as possible. So with that, um, that's pretty much what I have to say. Thank you, Patrick. Mike? Well, I think a lot of things that Pat had to say were what I was gonna say. Um, you know, certainly there was a lot of information out there throughout the past few months. Um, lots of letters of opposition. Um, Unfortunately, I think a lot of the letters of opposition came along with um, a lot of misinformation that was out there. And 
you know, certainly our job on planning and zoning is to, you know, look at the actual facts of what were presented. And, uh, you know, it's been several months of looking at all the facts of both sides of this. Um, you know, my biggest, my biggest concern after the site walk was 52 Prowling Pond. Um, uh, but I think that the applicant has done a, uh, a good job to, certainly the, the property line is very close. Um, so, uh, Did we lose him? Can you get no, I'm here. Um, but I think the applicant's done a good job with that, and the screening and uh, everything that goes along with uh, separating the properties. Um, I think the 23, 23 conditions imposed by the uh, Inlands and Wetlands Commission are uh, huge, and a lot of the things that you know I would have wanted to be in our uh, conditions of uh, approval. Um, Uh, right now, that, that's all. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you, Mike. Matt. So, agreeing with Pat, I thought about the fact that you know I have uh, I'm in an R40 zone myself, but uh, I don't have a very dense R40, uh, and I have quite a bit of room around me. And with that said. Um, there's quite a bit of noise. There's quite a bit of distraction on a regular basis, whether it be lawnmowers, uh, an ATV or a you know, dirt bike or something nearby. And you end up with distractions and things that you wouldn't necessarily uh, expect or things that could possibly be just as obnoxious or uh, you know, irritable as a large number of people in a high density area. So when I've been looking at this plan, I've been going back and forth about it, but the reality is, is that I, I could see our 80 zones being just as um, impactful in many ways as this proposal. Now, the other thing is that this is being uh, dug into the side of the hill a little bit. And with that, it's going to be lower than the grade on the back side of this hill. The reality is that if you were to put homes here, they could put them further back and they could be higher up and actually potentially have the ability to be taller than the building that's being proposed. Because if they were further back um, on that hill and they were a full two, two stories or whatever you wanna say for a height on a, on a home with a tall roof, uh, it could easily come out to be similar. So again, there's another reason for this being something that, that could fit in this area as well as, I mean, we've we had a Baptist church that could have been approved, it was approved, that could have been in that area and uh, certainly uh, would have fit in our residential area because that's typically where we can, uh, we have churches and whatnot. Um, just looking at my notes. So regardless of whether it is this development or an R80, I can see how it could be Basically, it's going to change the area in general, no matter what. And the reality is that the homeowners here need to understand that whoever develops this has the right to develop it. Now, um, with that said, uh, the building that's being proposed, in my opinion, should be three stories tall all around, uh, not three stories on half and four stories on the other half. Besides that, I have a serious concern with the zone. The zone itself has the ability to give density almost twice what's being proposed. That means that in the future, a future developer could potentially build this out to be twice as much. Granted, it would have to come to the commission. Granted that we would have to approve it and who knows when that would be. I mean, maybe outside of my lifetime even. But changing to the zone that's being proposed does not necessarily protect this area well enough, in my opinion. The area next door, which is RDM, has a very similar density to what's being proposed, although it's laid out very differently than the way that this building is. Those buildings are much longer, they're shorter, they're just, it's a different style development in general. But the density is actually very similar to what's up on Colt Highway, 
where they did the development of uh, 299, I believe. Um, but the, the piece of property that's up there, that's an RDM zone. And that is an appropriate zone for that area, which has backed up to an R, I believe that's an R80 that it backs up to an R40. Um, and I think that that's an appropriate zone to land here as well. And I think that the developer could fit what they're trying to do in that zone. So with that said, the potential of what could be on this property, especially with the five acres that, although will be um, conservation easement, will still be able to be calculated into the density calculations. That makes it a dangerous zone for a building that could potentially become much larger. So, um, especially since the coverage of this area can be much denser than what's being done right now as well. I don't believe that these developers have that in mind, but I'm trying to look forward to the future. Again, maybe even outside of my lifetime, but I don't believe that that area is suitable for the density that is within that zone. And once we change it, we are going to lose control of that. So I think that the commission needs to think strongly about whether or not they're willing to change it to that zone or whether or not we want to allow this developer to possibly come back and propose this under the RDM zone uh, and modify it slightly to fit that rather than the zone they're proposing. So um, the other thing I'll just mention is that I did uh, send out an email. I know that we all have all received it and I know that it was posted with some conditions that I suggested. Um, as you can take from the tone of what I'm saying, I don't believe that I can be in support of this. Not that I'm not in support of actually this building to some degree, I, I am, but under the current um, request, I can't necessarily be in support of it. And uh, although I probably will not be voting for this tonight, I, I will be voting, I will probably be voting against it tonight. Um, I do think that if the commissioners think that some of those other uh, conditions would be um, helpful or think that they would be prudent, then I think they should consider them in the motion. So uh, that's all I have to say, and uh, we'll see how everything goes tonight. Thank you, Inez. Thank you. Okay, um, good comments, you guys, thank you. All right, um, so thank you to town staff, the neighbors for letting us do the tour or tours. I also uh, visited the site a uh, number of times. Um, what is the current neighborhood? You know, obviously as residents, members of the commission, you know, we take neighborhoods very seriously. We want to make sure that um, we don't impact them, the traffic, you know, it's Farmington, right? I know I was quoted already, but what is the current neighborhood? Um, it's large medical building. Then you have a buffer of some woods and then you have homes in the back. Um, I believe that the proposed residential development would essentially become like a transition to the residential areas in the back. And I do not believe that it, it will detract from the overall neighborhood. Um, that is my uh, comment on the neighborhood. Um, you know, I listened for things like noise, light, overall impact um, to the properties nearby, the buffers. I think that the proposal uh, did a really good job with you know the trees, the buffers. Um, I too believe it should be a, a three-story building to limit impact to the neighbors. I think that the U-shape design um, will help with the noise and um, the, um, let's see, what was I writing here? I think the way it, the the U-shape yeah, will help with the noise, excuse me, and um, the way it's tucked back, um, I think that um, it limits, it, there's like a ver uh, vertical visual that it creates, even though you cannot see it from before. And I, I think it will benefit that area, that type of building, even though it's close to those two properties that we have toured. Um, you know, traffic is already being handled, I think, on that part of Route 4. And I think working with DOT, um, to improve some of the sight lines and turning access. I, I drive a small car and even though it's um, intersection has a light, um, you have to be cautious because 
just just the way it's done. So I think that improvement will be good. Uh, the traffic light already exists and you do have adequate parking in this plan. Um, the one thing that, um, uh, the one thing that bothers me, and I've heard it several times from some of the uh, speakers is, so we have a number of these uh, zones now, uh, floating zones, innovation zones, whatever. Um, I'm really troubled that, um, you know, unless you sit on a commission or are really plugged into the town business, people just have no idea. I'm wondering, and I, I don't know who's, um, who's, who this falls under, but the GIS maps, whatever. I think when you go to town of Farmington website, the town should reflect those zones. Like this is not the only project where people are surprised that they are, you know, there are all these zones and these areas of Unionville and Farmington. So I don't know if it's a town staff thing uh, to update GIS mapping. You know, right now I can go to GIS and look at the land use. I can look at the soil type, but I don't see any of these zones that we have developed over time. Um, so I am hoping that with this project that can be um, done so uh, that people in our town have an idea what's going on. And um, let's see. Yeah, and I, I think that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Inez. Marcy? Thank you. Um, I, I have a lot less to say, but I absolutely appreciate the comments of my colleagues. And I think that um, I, I agree with most of what was said. Um, I think that I keep coming back to the impact. And if I look at impact and look at the town, um, that's a very different look than looking at the homes on Prattling Pond. And I think we have to follow the, the, the letter of the law and I am in support of this development going forward. So that's where I sit, thanks. Thank you, Marcy. Marcy, can you, uh, for us for the record, please, could you confirm that you had an opportunity to review uh, the meeting from May 10th when you were absent and you're sufficiently up to date on that last, the latest I, information. I listened, I listened to the entire four and a half hours. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank, thank you very much for yeah. confirming oh, that for the record. Yes, absolutely. Sorry. Thank guys. you, Marcy. Thanks. <laughs> Scott? Nope. No, hearing's closed, oh. so no alternates. Mm. Hearing's closed. Oh, that's right. Okay. So you, okay. you are next if you um, care to yeah, add any This comments. is Barbara Brennan, and I'd like to make couple of comments. First of all, I'm very proud of the commission and your attitude this evening. It, it's obvious that all of you have taken time to really evaluate and take the time that we asked for. We asked to be given time to deliberate and to think about how we felt about this application. So whether you're in favor or against it, I personally, as the chair, appreciate your loyalty uh, and your carefulness for the town. Um, our community should be proud that you're here. They won't always agree with you, but they should be proud that you're volunteering to do this important job for our community. As for the application personally, um, I heard a lot of the comments this evening from my commissioners. Um, that I thought about over the past, actually the past two or three months since the whole thing began. There were a lot of things that came to mind for me um, and the importance of neighborhood for Prattling Pond. It's a very important factor in our town. Um, it, it's also important to understand the zone that this application is in and what else could be going there. Um, what else could go there instead of this? And that's always something that I worry about. What's, what's the alternative going to look like? Um, as much as the land is beautifully wooded and it's lovely to look at, it's probably not a place where our 40 housing is going to be built, which is really what the folks at Prattling would love to see happen. And, and I understand that. Um, 
but this application may be better than a McDonald's or a, a hotel, which might function at a completely different level. Um, you know, a franchise restaurant that might be smelly 24 seven, or a lot of other things that could have been done here. So as we go forward and, and we get a motion in place and we cast our votes, I wanna thank all of you for your deliberation. I think you've done a wonderful job being committed to this application and it's been a difficult one for all of us. And with that, we'll go. I, I would, um, Madam Chair, if you don't mind, there, one of the comments made had to do with density and I'd like to provide a clarification if you don't mind. And I talked to, uh, and um, Attorney DiCrescenzo is on the phone um, as well. And so um, Attorney DiCrescenzo, feel free to chime in uh, if you'd like. But um, Commissioner Pogson, you made a reference, um, and, and forgive me if I'm misquoting you, but a concern that with this change of zone, it opened uh, this location up to densities that were, that could go up to the maximum at this particular location would be 15 units uh, per acre. And uh, I, I just wanted to provide clarification that the commission with this approval, should an approval go forward, the, the, that approval is contingent upon this particular site plan. Someone can't then later come in with something that has a greater density than what is currently being proposed without requiring an additional hearing process. So it would have to come back through. So this, this sets, this plan and zone go together and are not separate elements. So I, I just felt that that was an important um, piece of information to provide. Attorney DiCrescenzo, do you have anything to add to that or did I explain no, that? Correctly? I think you, you've stated that correctly, Shannon. The site plan and the zone change are go hand in hand. And if, if the commission does approve the zone change, it's approving the site plan and that would limit density to what's depicted on the site plan. In the future, if someone were to come forward um, and try uh, and propose to increase the density, it would, this process would start all over again. It would be a major uh, change to the uh, zone, which is the site plan, and it would go through this same uh, process before the commission. There, there, you could not come in if, if this project is approved as presented, uh, it, an applicant could not come in with simply a new site plan and say, we don't want density at seven, we want it at 15. That would trigger uh, another master plan and another zone change process. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you. Um, I, would, I would like to ask him a question. Um, uh, absolutely. Uh, it's Barbara Brenneman. Um, my question to you is, I'm looking at this as three motions. The first motion for a zone change, the second motion mm -hmm. for a site plan, and the third motion for the building height. Mm -hmm. um, it, it just the conversation we just had, for protective purposes, should the first two be adjoined? I think so, yes. But Chan and I have talked about this. We talked in terms of two motions. It, it's up to the commission, but you could do site plan and zone change and site plan as a single motion because you can't have one without the other because the site plan right. is the master plan and the master plan is the zone change. Right. On the height issue, you do need a second motion because that has a different approval standard. Uh, that takes five votes to, uh, to pass. And if it only gets four, then the additional height would not be uh, approved. And that would so, trigger, uh, it go would ahead. Be, it would be your suggestion then that we have one motion for a combination of zone change and site plan approval as- That is correct. Yes, because you, you can't have one without the other. If you don't approve the zone change, you can't have the site plan. 
And if you don't approve the site plan, there's nothing to base the zone change on. Okay. And then a, a second motion uh, on the height. That is correct. Okay. Because the record has to show how many people, how many members of the commission were in favor of the waiver, which has a different, uh, a different approval standard. Okay, thank you very much. Um, hearing that, commissioners, we need a motion and a second to go forward. I actually have a question, uh, um, uh, Madam Chair. The, the conditions that were proposed, so those were shared with the applicant and um, the attorneys. And um, unless we have other commissioners have any uh, additions, those conditions are going in or like are those up for discussion? Absolutely. Absolutely. They're completely up for discussion. They're suggested by staff, but it's up to the commission to decide if they're going to adopt them. Do we have the right to ask the applicant if he's willing to accept those conditions if they are attached to a motion? Most of them have been discussed during the meetings. They were shared. So the 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 draft resolutions and the conditions were all emailed to the three attorneys and the three primary principals those attorneys are working with. So uh, Hollister and Kyle Richards for the applicant, Fitchman and Dr. Uh, sorry, Dr. Fitchman and Keith Ainsworth, um, and then attorney Shansky and the Zetugens were all CC'd on these documents. Um, no one had any comment. I did not formally solicit comments, but um, again, if there was anything truly objectionable, they, I, they would have reached out. I did not have any- But should we have out. an approval from them on the record, something on the record that- These are all- Traditional. This is- have done that. Yeah, but we're closed. We're closed. It's all, if they don't like it, then they can appeal the decision and appeal a condition of the decision. But yeah, and I would advise against if the commission can change, and reduce, and add to the conditions, but the conditions really need to be something that was part of the testimony and documentation that you heard at the, during the public hearing process or that come right out of the regulations something that's new to the proceedings probably should not turn up as a condition of approval because it wasn't part of the public hearing process. So in the draft resolution, everything is dated and it's all included. So the draft resolution, the purpose of the draft resolution itself is to document- Everything is there. One, one location yep. that all the legalities yep. of what the mm -hmm. commission took part in are all there in one concise location. So that's really documenting everything received mm -hmm. and what the commission did and when. Um, and then the conditions, again, are- The staff conditions? The, there's the staff and even the ones that came in from the commission are really nothing out of the ordinary with respect to how, what had already been discussed during the application and public hearing process. Okay. Did all commissioners see the conditions? Yeah, Patrick Carrier. So, um, all right, so you have one through 10 and then you have commissioner suggested conditions. Um, I know one through 10 were spoken um, through, you know, during the, the meetings and so on, but what about like, and I'm just reading here, like number 13, there will be no balconies. This is a commissioner suggested condition. Um, no balconies on the outer apartments, um, which border R80. Was that something that was mentioned? I don't remember that. And, and I feel like I listened to, to every word of, of every meeting. I don't, I don't believe it was mentioned specifically. So this is something if the commission 
wants to put an added restriction on with respect to, um, I'm assuming that recommendation was for noise attenuation. Um, again, so those are, was not discussed specifically. It's something for the commission as a group to consider. And if the application's approved, then that's something the applicant needs to decide if they are going to adhere to or appeal. Okay, and is it worth to discuss those maybe? Absolutely. Least, yeah, sure. so like number, I mean, we could start with number 11, the first one. There will be no access to the rooftop for residents. Is that, that's part of, there was the um, rooftop area for people to, to be mm -hmm. able to go visit, right? Um, all right, so so well, what I don't, as a town and as this commission, it's in our best interest that this building remain marketable, you know, um, and, and I'm not saying it wouldn't be, but if it wasn't discussed during the, the meetings, you know, I would have loved, it, maybe it should have, you know, I mean, I just, I hate to take that away. I mean, this is or take that away. I mean, to make that as a condition, I mean, that's a big condition. I mean, you know, when, when this, when this was first proposed, you know, they were saying without the fourth story, this project was probably not going to work. Right. I mean, that's what I took from it. Um, and with that one, I just, it, it feels like that that's a marketing tool for them. Um, so I just want to be careful and my thought is I, I would want to be careful when 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 make we make like a that to me that's a pretty significant change to that building um and it wasn't talked about um, and number number 12 number 12 is not the same but what the other one 13 no balconies on the outer apartments which border the r80 again that that's big for marketability i mean i picture myself wanting to potentially move well, I never would want to personally, but let's say, let's say somebody did. I mean, that would be a big thing. I would certainly want that balcony, you know, people on those balconies. I mean, they're not, they're not going out there to, to throw them back and, 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 and be rowdy. You know, I mean, it would be a dangerous place to do that. I mean, they're simply just escaping and getting outside without having to go downstairs. So in my opinion, 11 and 13 stuck out to me um, in terms of, of, you know, kind of taking a, a chance in, in really hurting the marketability of that building. And, and as a Farmington resident, I want that building to rent, you know? Um, so I don't know how the others feel. The rooftop, was it the entire rooftop? Uh, no, it was uh, this portion of the roof, the roof uh, in this it's area, the this lower four stories. Okay. So I'm seeing. You can see in those views. You can see it, it's here. So it's this portion, right? So this is the driveway entrance and this is that little tail that comes in. It's this with a, a glass and coat closure. It's this portion. Uh, so it's a very small percentage of the rooftop. Yeah, so of the public amenities that are building at least. Yeah. And all sides of this building have balconies on the outer side? Uh, they're not, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to say from a representation standpoint, I'm not seeing. All right, let me go, because they're not showing there, they're not showing there. Yeah, they are. It's above the garages on the outside. So garages, huh. so a handful of them. I'm going to put a couple chairs. Sorry, I think I went the wrong way. No, oh. it's just that one. So I'd have to go, I, I can get into a different presentation to see where the other balconies are, but I, would presume that this is a representative representative of the of what the other fours are. 
another elevation. Okay. Thank you. It, I think it shows, I'm looking at the plan, like plan level one, plan level two. Yep. Um, and it, I think that shows it. So they don't all have it. Um, I think if I'm reading that correctly, I don't know if you could pull those up. Um, maybe, maybe we can kind of decipher that better, but yeah, so level, yeah, plan level one, two, and three, and then three, yeah, and I have the old one of four, so. trying to find <laughs> to go back and find the the correct one. That's a summary and explain the production. Revised architecture. Right. Elevation. Yeah. Elevation from below to revised architecture. Down here. Yeah. There we go. Thank you. So this is the eastern elevation. So this is facing, facing the avenue. The oh, avenue. Yeah. yeah. So this not every there. there's there's a handful of balconies. Not every set of windows. Not every opening is a balcony. Obviously, mm -hmm. um, set in as opposed to cantilevered. You know, and then and, and this is kind of my point. Like, so it, it it's hard because. We, without having brought that up and, and given the applicant the opportunity to explain whether that's possible or not possible. Um, I guess I, I guess it's something you, you can do and you take a chance, but I, you know, we, we don't know exactly how that affects the building in, in, in terms of marketability, but also how it's put together, you know. Understood. Some of them seem to be uh, set in and some are cantilevered. You can see these look, appear to be cantilevered and these are set in. And these are cantilevered and then these are recessed. So, okay. thank you, Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Patrick, you wanna to add to it? Uh, no, I mean, that's it. I, I think I got my point across. I don't know how others feel. Again, I, you know, yeah, it's not something I'd <laughs> vote against, right? I just would prefer not to see that in there be because it, it was not brought up. Um, you know, I mean, I know some of the things might be, you know, rooftop units to be screened. I mean, that's, you know, that, that makes more sense, right? Or at least seems to be more feasible without affecting too much. Um, you know, and then there's the other one, you know, the, the all lighting will be dark skies co uh, complement or whatever. And I believe that's already. Yeah, in. Yeah. yeah, correct. Yeah, so that's it. I mean, again, I don't know if it's worth to go those when I read through them briefly, those those two, those two big ones just kind of stood out um, that I, again, personally would prefer not be in there only because I I just feel it's it's a big change without having you know, us knowing what, how that impacts. Pat, when I read the, you know, all the conditions, um, I think the building will look strange if um, you eliminate the balconies. And I do think it's, um, it's a bonus, right? Um, and it will look better, I think. Um, the rooftop, I, the whole center, the courtyard seems like it's pretty well developed that has space for residents if they choose to use it I I, I, um, I agree with 11 um, but I think 13 um, I would say I, I would not include 13. Thank you anyone else? This is Matt Pogson um, I had put a couple of those in there and uh, the reasoning was simply to try to mitigate some of the noise and some of the disturbance that could be caused to the residents. And with that said, um, I specifically did say, you know, you could have a house backing up to that property. You could have neighbors that have 
uh, balconies or a deck sticking out in that direction at that height. Um, <clears throat> so it is possible to have just as much of a disturbance from uh, having those. Again, I was trying and trying to find ways um, to have uh, basically some sort of compromise because compromises, good compromises in my opinion are where both parties don't end up walking away necessarily as happy as I want to be. Um, so in this case, this was something that I thought would be good for the residents of the budding properties and it would be okay with the developer. I can understand the concern um, for number 13 and I have already said I'm concerned about the zone itself. So although I'm actually pretty okay with the building itself um, and I can see that this probably will be moving forward, I have no issue with number 13 being knocked off that list. Or, um, I mean, number 11, I believe that that is asking to have parties up on top of a roof. I mean, that's kind of what that area is meant to be. Uh, it's meant for gatherings and it's meant for um, things that could potentially not be things you want to necessarily um, want inside the building. So uh, I don't know if, if how the rest of the commission feels about number 11. Number 13, I could see that striped off without any, you know, I, I can understand that completely. Um, but regardless, I'm glad to hear that there are some others that have thought that some of these are, are thought out and at least fall in line with some of the other regulations we have around town. Anyone else? Okay, we need a motion please and a second. Okay, on the conditions or just in general? We need a motion that combines the zone change and the site plan approval. So it's kind of under the way the old business is written at 402. So it's at, as presented with conditions. But I don't think we, well, are we in unison? I mean. I'm sorry? We just, we three commissioners spoke up, right? About conditions. And I don't think we're all, all on the same page. Uh, that's not your concern. Our concern now is to get a motion and a second, and then we'll see how it goes. What they decide on conditions will come out as we vote. Okay, so um, the con so the uh, motion. Okay, so change of zone and site plan we're doing as one, correct? Yes. This is Ina St. James. I make a motion to approve the application from 402 Farmington Ave LLC for change of zone from BR and R80 to special innovation zone and site plan approval for multifamily development at lots 40 and 40B1 Farmington Avenue, also known as 8231 and 9249 Farmington Avenue to the rear of 406 Farmington Avenue. With conditions? Uh, thank you. With uh, conditions uh, drafted May 14th, 2021. From? Let's see here. From town staff. Uh, as well as commissioners suggested conditions. As well as commissioners suggested conditions. And perhaps at this point in the motion, you strike condition 11 and strike condition 13. You follow or, me? Or whichever ones you want right. to. You're the with, one yep. the motion. Uh, with uh, condition number 11, um, excuse me, condition number 13 being removed. Is there any other condition a commissioner would like to remove? Can we uh, just include the resolution dated May 14th, 2021 too, please, Inez? So that Along the with the resolution um, document dated May 14th, 2021. Okay, thank you, sorry. Yep. Sorry, it's piecemeal. No, I know, it's a bunch. Yep, we're good. We need a second to that motion, please.
Uh, Patrick Carrier, I second. All right, we have a motion and a second. We're gonna cast a vote. All in favor of that motion as presented and seconded, say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Nay. Matt Parkson. Does the planner want a roll call? We're going to do a roll call vote, please. Patrick? Yes. Mike? Yes. Matt? Nay. Inez? Yes. Marcy? Yes. Barbara is an aye. Motion carries. Thank you all very much for that hard work. I'm sorry. All right, now I'm being reminded again that we have a second motion. And this is written on the back of draft resolution dated May 14th, which we just added to our motion. And it's a separate motion for building height. The motion to approve the building height for 402 Farmington Avenue LLC as modified and presented. That is what we need as a motion. Please. I make a motion. This is Ines St. James. I make a motion to approve um, the building height for 402 Farmington Avenue LLC as modified and presented. Does everyone understand? We need a second for that motion, please. Uh, Patrick Carrier, I second. Does everyone understand? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Nay. Abstention? Okay, we're gonna want roll call, please. You want a roll call, please? Patrick? I am a yes. Mike? Yes. Matt? Nay. Inez? Nay. Marcy? Yes. Barbara is a yes. Okay, the height does not pass. It was a 5 6 vote. Yeah, correct. And, and you had a 5 6 no, vote. No, I did not. Matt Inez and I, Inez said no. Matt and Inez, you both said no to the height, correct? Correct. Correct. The height does not pass. All righty, folks. We are finished with 402. Okay. Yes. Okay, let's go on to the agenda, please. We have a, uh, a six item agenda under new business. We're going to add a seven and it's going to appear first. It's an Eagle Scout application. And I believe our scout is here. Yes, can we get a motion to amend the agenda to add this item to the agenda? Mm -hmm. This is Ines St. James. I make a motion to amend the agenda of uh, town plan and zoning meeting uh, May 14th to include Eagle Scout project. Perfect, thank you. Can I have a second, please? Second. Matthew Pogson, I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? Motion carries, thank you. Okay, Daniel, are you on the line? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Okay. So it's all yours. If you want to go ahead and present your project to the committee and introduce yourself um, and then present your project to the commission and I can scroll through the pictures for you as you move along your discussion. Okay. Um, so I'm Daniel Dang. Uh, I'm uh, from uh, Boy Scout Troop 68 of Farmington. Um, and I'm just here to talk about my Eagle project. So my Eagle project is to build a new trailhead kiosk at the Farmington, Mo Farmington Memorial Town Forest. 
um, near the entrance at a Red Oak Hill Road. Um, so in 2014, um, a guy from our troop um, named uh, Will Sanford, he built a trailhead kiosk near the entrance at Red Oak Hill Road in the Farmington Memorial Forest uh, for his Eagle Project. And then in 2020, a tree fell on the kiosk, which severely damaged the kiosk. Um, you can see that uh, current state in, its, uh, in the image. Um, so it's pretty broken. Um, the whole thing basically fell down. Um, and the only thing that's left standing is part of the one of the posts. Um, you can go to the next page. So I plan to build a new trailhead kiosk um, to replace the old one. And I first plan to clear out the debris from the old kiosk and also see if I can salvage any of the parts to be used in the new kiosk. Um, and then after that, I will try and uh, buy the materials for the new um, kiosk and then build it. And the new kiosk will um, have uh, important information like maps and other uh, necessary information, um, which would be helpful for uh, people visiting the forest. And it should also, um, even though it might not be a major problem in the forest, um, I think it definitely um, be one less thing for the forest to worry about. And the new kiosk is supposed to look like the one uh, pictured below. And you can go on the next page. Um, and the kiosk location will be, uh, like I said before, um, It'll be near uh, Red Oak Hill Road. Um, it's not that far away from the entrance, um, about 200 feet away, maybe. Um, only maybe like a minute walk. Um, and on the map below, you can see the approximate lo location of the kiosk. Um, and then on the next page, um, you can see um, some of the basic uh, plans for the construction of the kiosk, which um, I basically just took from uh, Will Sanford's project because I will be, um, or I should be building the same, uh, same kiosk at the same location. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much all I have right now. Thank you. You need a motion on this application and a second, please. This is Ines St. James. I make a motion to approve the application from Daniel Dang for his Eagle project um, as presented. I have a second, please. Hogs under my second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstention? Motion carries. Thank you very much for your application. Congratulations Aye, on, on a great perspectives program for uh, the new entry off Red Oak Hill. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to number one on your agenda list, New Horizons, request for a one-year extension of the special permit approval at 37 Bliss Road. This is something most of you have been working on for a while. So, so Chris, I have your application, or excuse me, your letter on the screen. Um, this is dated from May 4th. 2021, if you would like to share with the commission. Sure. Um, first off, thank you for, um, for let's apply yet again. And 
I don't mind being pushed back by an Eagle Scout. I am the mother of two myself. So, <laughs> um, but New Horizons has been working for several years now to rehab our property, which was built in the 1980s. And the, uh, the next step of that project is a new building. Actually, it's four small buildings, much like the cottages on our property that have 22 single units. For those of you not familiar, um, when, you, when, when people with disabilities move into New Horizons, they have to move in with a roommate because most of our apartments are double apartments. Um, and there is a wait list to get a single apartment. So you have to reside in a double until your name comes up. And that wait list right now is about 15 years. So these are grown adults who have to live like a college dorm kind of life. Um, for 15 years to get a single apartment. So it is not our goal to increase our tenants at New Horizons. We will still have a headcount of a maximum of 101, um, but we will move from being one third singles and two thirds doubles to being two thirds singles and one third double apartments. This will allow us to start to rehab the interior of the apartments um, as we move folks slowly into the new building. Um, we've requested an extension in the past because we were still chasing the funding um, the Bond Commission in April voted to approve this project through the Department of Housing. So the funding is now underway. We expect to close on that funding in the next few months, start the project before the end of this calendar year, and finish it, we hope, in 2022, but the official paperwork says February of 2023. Um, our architects are on the line if you have any specific questions but this is just an extension of what you already approved. Any of the commissioners have questions to the applicant? I was thinking, oh, this is Ines and James. Um, I was thinking of the one year, like, um, so I, it, it sounds like, it sounds wonderful. There's light at the end of the tunnel, um, but what if uh, in one year, um, we're still talking about it, there's some kind of delay, like, should this be a longer period or? Certainly we're open to that. You know, uh, we are so excited to be working with the Department of Housing and um, some federal housing trust dollars and they are actually anxious to close. We are almost a shovel ready project. Um, so I hope we don't need another one, but we are certainly happy to entertain a longer than one year extension just in case. Because isn't there a limit of extensions or am I completely so after, this is the second extension. Yeah. So after this point, um, if they were to expire this one year um, extension, they would have to come back in for okay. re approval. Mm -hmm. I, I, my op again, opinion, I think this should just in light of what's happening, the cost of materials, um, I, I think it should be longer than one year, but um, I'll go with what commission other commissioners have to say. Well, the question that I would ask that is if, if we're allowed to extend it for more than one year. Mm -hmm. I don't think we are. Mm -hmm. um, I think by statute, we're allowed to give them what they're asking for. Right. Ah, okay. And I certainly understand Inez's concern because oh. just the cost of materials right now right. could mm -hmm. extend it longer. Right. Um, but, but they would need a reapproval. So next year, if, if for whatever reason it needs to still continue to be held over and next year at the time of reapproval the commission could opt to do a two-year approval at the time of reapproval which i believe they have done in other like to the charles house one right. rather than having this and come back every year it pushed it then mm -hmm. to every other year but because we're on the off cycle they were originally approved mm -hmm. in 18 yeah 18. Got this. they extended in 19 approved in 2020 and, and so now, now it's an extension right so um so the most we can do at this point based on the way our regulations are written is the one-year extension and would, would they have the right to come in and ask for an exception next year so next year they can come back in and do the reapproval and ask for two years rather than a one year but is it a full application approval or is it is. so they have to make all the financial mm -hmm. obligations yep. of a full application right which is okay. what they did last year I believe the regulation for a special permit though if they could at least do a foundation that counts as the uh, start yeah, correct start you have to you have to show you started yeah. yeah right so then they, 
they would not that. need to come back for an extension Correct. if they got their foundation in. Correct. Okay. That's something to listen and I, I hear. hear you loud and clear. <laughs> Nobody is more excited to start than we are and our tenants, that's for sure. Well, I hate to see you have to go through the financial expense of full-blown application again. That's, you know. Understood. You're a different kind of applicant, although we have to treat you like we treat every applicant. Um, and we understand that. Okay. So at this point, the best we can do is what the motion has said which is a one year extension. Um, did, I'm did, sorry, this is, this is David or I, I'm the architect for the project. I mm -hmm. just had a question about um, the foundation piece. Because, so if we, if we have the foundation in the ground before that special permit expires, then we would know we would not need an extension. That's correct? Correct, yes. Okay, and that date, the clock from that one year extension starts from today? No, it'll be from the end of the appeal period, I believe. So there's, there's a two no week. Yeah, I'd have to. Uh, well, we'll um, double check the timing. Well, when was it approved? June twenty fifth, two thousand and eighteen. May eleventh, two thousand and twenty. So it's June. May eleventh. It's twenty. Today is June. I mean, today is May 24th, so it would be a year from today. Because it's not a year, so there's no yeah. time frame. Yeah. There's no appeal period on this. It's an extension. Right? It's a one-year extension from the time it was approved. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't think. Right. So then so you have to go back to the original approval. Well, so the original approval. Is June so 25th fifth. of the 18th. So I'd go by the 18th. So which yeah. uh, how about this? Let's hope we're not getting to a point where we're splitting hairs next year. At least I certainly you, hope not. <laughs> if you have a shovel in the ground and you have made, because I, I, I don't think the whole foundation has to be in, you have to be mobilized and foundation work actively started. Okay. We're going to say before the 1st of June. And we should definitely know you're either 1st of June 2022. 20, you're either mobilized and ready to go or you're not. It's yeah. pretty evident at that point. And, and, yeah, and, and hopefully and we're, not, we're mobilized and ready to go long before that. And so. for the size of this project, you know, we're not splitting hairs over a week or two. Okay. Right? So I appreciate that. I'm just, we, uh, as an architect, we're always looking for the deadline. Under, understood. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. All right, we have a motion and a second on the floor, please. This is Ines St. James. Was there a, a second? Motion. Yeah, no. Motion. No, it is. I thought yeah. she made a motion. No. Uh, not yet. <laughs> go, I'm okay. go for it, Ines. All right. This is Ines St. James. I make a motion to approve uh, the request from New Horizons for one-year extension of special permit, which special permit, which was approved uh, at 37 Bliss Memorial. I have a second, please. That yeah, pogs and then I second that. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Thank Medic you all stop. so much. Thank you. Yep. Good Thank luck. You Thank you. Connecticut sign. Sign application for property located at 3 Fairview Drive. John and Dave, I believe you are on the phone. I have your application on the screen for your event. Okay. Do we have a representative from CT Signs on the line? They got an in, right? Yeah. No. If there is someone on the line um, on the attendee side that is trying to present this application, please raise your hand in the Zoom function. I haven't received any emails from people trying to do 
Do you see him in the no, Van Morgan? No, I must just a phone number and I don't. Just, um, last call of somebody from uh, CT Signs for 3 Eastview Drive is looking to present from the attendee side. Please raise your hand in the Zoom function and I will allow you to speak. Don't see Dave. Yeah. Put it off. Yeah, we can try them again at the, at the end. At the end. Mm -hmm. There's a few in front of them. Okay, we'll go to Palmer Resources site plan application to install a second silo at 656 New Britain Avenue in Unionville. How you doing? Uh, this is Matt Johns, uh, CEO for Palmer Resources. So I guess if you just want to scroll through, I mean, um, I believe uh, last year we had presented to you guys um, for a silo, which was approved. We had put that up. Um, we were looking to put a, an additional silo up to the left of it. Um, same exact silo that we have in place, same height, same width, same company. Um, nothing changed using the same uh, Pelletier Builders and Capura to do the foundation work. Um, there'll be no additional uh, parking spots taken away from us. Um, the spot where we're looking to put it, there is a tree in place right now, which we would have to cut down um, to put the silo there. That tree right now, as you can see, pictures coming up, uh, does not block it from the road or anything. It's up against the building. Um, there's enough coverage along the road where you cannot really see the silo at all right now. Um, the second one would not be visible as well. That picture right there, the first one, oh, that's from our parking lot, so that's not from the road, but it would look just like that. You can see the tree to the left of it that would be removed, and that median right there would be taken out. Um, as you can see, this is from the road across the street. Um, that's the only part of the silo you can see. The other one to the left of it will not be visible. That other tree would be blocking it basically completely. Um, there's no visibility from any of the neighbors. Uh, to the right of our building is the storage facility. Across the street is the uh, Companions and Homemakers building, which is you know, pretty far away. Uh, and the neighbor to the left of us across the street has no visibility at all to our parking. Commissioners, questions? Patrick? Um, no, no questions. I drove by there today and yeah, looking from the road, I actually got distracted and drove right by it and had to turn around. So uh, you, you really can't see it from the road. Um, I did see uh, that we can possibly consider requesting additional plantings. I, in my opinion, not necessary. I mean, you have an, um, I'm sorry, you have a bunch of evergreens that do a really got really good job shielding this. Um, it's almost like you'd have to remove one of those beautiful big shade trees, um, you know, to, to add an evergreen if you wanted to make it less visible in the winter. Um, but that I don't think would be worth it. So no, I, I don't have any other questions. I mean, it, this thing is shiny and it's kind of hard to see from the road. You really don't notice um, is what I noticed today. No questions other than Thank that. you, Mike. No, I know there was a lot of conversation when they, uh, when we approved the first one. Um, for staff, there have been no complaints or anything about this, the, uh, the first one? No. no, we have not received any complaints, anything at all. Um, a matter of fact, it's cut down on um, deliveries because it's able to hold three trucks of uh, material at once. So that cuts down on three trucks, additional three trucks a month for us. Uh, in addition, um, for garbage and scrap removal, because the boxes that do come uh, carrying the material that's in there, a tractor trailer truck has 40, 1500 uh, pound boxes in them, uh, of cardboard of Gaylord boxes, which we have to crush and throw away. CWPM will pick up on a monthly basis. So it cuts down that as well. Town staff has also not heard co uh, complaints. Okay, great. Thank you. No further questions. Matt? 
So just to confirm, uh, this contains a resin, but the resin is in a pellet form, that's correct? Yes. Okay, so there's no necessary uh, concern with any containment if this was to spill or topple over? No, nope. Okay, that's what I, I thought that's what it was last time and I was trying to scroll through the documents to find that and I didn't, I just must have read over it, but I just wanted to make sure that there's no contamination issues. So, um, other than that, the material itself, so the, the size, the shape, all that is going to be the same. Is it actually going to be uh, stainless or it's galvanized or something? It's, uh, um, yeah, it, it's galvanized like that. Same, okay. Same one in the picture, the uh, fire marshal has been there. We, when we got approval, there's no need for sprinklers on it because the material in there is not flammable unless you're getting it over like 2,800 degrees, which is... Yeah, let's hope we don't do that. Yes. So, <laughs> all right. That's very good. That's all my questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Inez? No questions. Marcy? No questions. Scott? No questions. Thanks. Keith? No questions. Thank you. John? Uh, no questions. I have no questions. Um, Madam Chair, Matt Pogson again. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just curious are there any bollards around the existing? Uh, structure. I'm looking at this picture here just to protect it. You just said 2,800 degrees, and I thought of like that truck, you know, accidentally hitting it or something. Are there bollards around it or yet? Yeah, no. Front legs. Just are do the front legs work as bollards, I guess? Yeah, they, they do. And the truck, I mean, you can't get a truck into there. The, it's a tractor trailer that backs up there. So it's, it's nowhere close to that. There's two parking spots in front of it. So okay. it, it backs up parallel to the, the median right there. It's, it's nowhere near. And then there's a 30-foot hose that connects to the bottom. Uh, you can kind of see where it connects and it just pumps it in. Okay. So no, even those vehicles that are parking there can't just drive straight into that. Those those, those uh, yeah, legs those. are working as bollards, like yep. you said. Okay. That's, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you for the extra question. Sure. Thank you. We need a motion and a second, please. This is Ines St. James. I make a motion to approve the application from Polymer Resources to install a second silo at 656 New Britain Avenue as presented. This is and Matt Hogson, and I second that. All right, there's a motion and a second on Polymer Resources. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Abstention? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a lovely evening. You too. The next application is 10110 LLC, a site plan application for the addition of approximately 1,340 square feet of composite deck to existing office building and modification of existing parking lot layout at 281 Farmington Avenue. Uh, Jim, are you on the line? You have your application on the screen? Yes, I'm here. Great. Uh, good evening for the record. My name is Jim Cassidy, professional engineer and principal with the firm of Halsey, Pearson & Cassidy. Um, I'm here tonight representing, uh, um, I'm sorry, <clears throat> sorry, my throat here. <laughs> I'm here tonight representing uh, 10110 LLC, uh, who is the owner of the building located at 281 Farmington Avenue. Uh, we're here tonight seeking uh, a permit uh, to install a, actually it's a patio. Um, I think it's misworded in the application. It's a patio, it's not, not a uh, composite deck uh, to the side of the building uh, located at uh, 281 Farmington Avenue. The site itself uh, is located on the easterly side of Farmington Avenue. Uh, it, it was, um, there's actually two buildings on the site, one at 291 Farmington Avenue, which is uh, the office of Farmington Dental Associates. Uh, this is the building uh, that used to be, I think it was Friar Architects uh, to the north. Um, to the east of the site is uh, the Yukon Medical Center. Uh, to the north is the entrance type to drive to Yukon Medical Center. Uh, the property or the building is presently occupied by Connecticut Wealth Management. Um, what they're looking to do in the, uh, the brick color area off on the left side where the hand is on the screen right now. <clears throat> presently, there are six parking spaces in that location and a uh, portion of a landscape island that makes up the difference in the grade from the front parking lot to the rear parking lot. <clears throat> Those six parking spaces will be removed. Uh, there's going to be a new entry door put onto the side of the building. 
uh, in that area, they're looking at putting a paver patio. <clears throat> the paver patio area would have a total area of about 1,851 square feet. It's going to be circumferenced um, by a seat wall. Uh, the seat wall would, the inner core of the seat wall <clears throat> would be constructed out of uh, CMU. Uh, it's going to be finished with a thin cut uh, field stone uh, to match the other stone walls that are presently on the site. Uh, it would be capped with a bluestone um, uh, cap to act as a seat. Um, as I mentioned, we are going to be removing the six parking spaces. Um, those six parking spaces worked out to about 718 square feet. <clears throat> if we took a look at the two uses that remain on the property, the, uh, the uh, financial office and the medical offices, and we go through your zoning table, uh, or zoning requirements um, based upon the current uses, uh, the total parking required for both of these buildings would be about 95 parking spaces. Presently, there's 147, five being handicapped. Uh, we're going to be reducing by six, so we at 141. So we far uh, exceed what is actually required for parking on, on the site. I'm sorry, we have a whole, the total of 146, five of them being handicapped. So we're gonna uh, exceed uh, what is actually required on the site. Um, Drainage, um, the patio is designed to pitch away from the building. Uh, as I mentioned, there's a seat wall around the perimeter. Uh, at the low edges of the, the seat, the patio and the seat wall, there would be a trench drain installed to collect the, the water runoff. Uh, that trench drain would be connected to an existing catch basin out back. Uh, the overall increase in the previous coverage we're looking at is about 1,133 square feet. It should be noted um, in your zoning regulations, uh, I know your maximum impervious coverage is 40%. Um, you're allowed to go to 50% with a 5-6 vote on, on this. Uh, the present site is at 47.18%. Uh, with this change, uh, we will be at 49 or 47.9. So we have about any tenths of a percent increase. Uh, we, again, uh, I, I saw this always as we're actually building a impervious surface that's what I call clean area. It's not parking area. Uh, it's not an area that's maintained during the winter. So there's no salts and sands uh, put on it that would pollute uh, any, any stormwater runoff off this. Uh, this area would be utilized uh, just for, for the employees of the building. They wanna go out and have lunch or if they have a client on a uh, nice day and they wanna go outside and enjoy the fresh air. Uh, it's just to uh, make it open, a little more open to, to nature and be able to get outside and enjoy the outside. There will be a small sectional walkway uh, that would connect the walk along the front of the building. So the front parking spaces will be able to access uh, from that front parking area through an opening in the seat wall into that patio area. In addition to, uh, there's gonna be a set of steps uh, constructed uh, to the back parking area because the grade in the back is lower. Uh, to get you up to the proper grade. Um, so we are going to need a waiver of the overall previous coverage. Again, for your regulations, we're allowed to go 50% with a 5-6 vote. Uh, the other thing I, I will note is when this property was originally developed, there was actually a 70-foot strip of land along the front of it um, that was actually um, deeded over to the town of Farmington uh, for purposes of widening Farmington Avenue for the entrance to the Yukon Health Center. Uh, if that property was still in play or still part of this overall site, uh, we would not need a waiver. We would be within the 40% 40, 40 requirement, um, but because that property was given away, uh, we, we need this uh, waiver of the previous coverage. So with that, I'm gonna conclude my presentation and hopefully answer any questions the commission may have. Thank you. Commissioners, questions, Patrick? Uh, no questions. Mike? No questions. Matt? Uh, the only question is for staff. This is supposedly composite decking, but it's actually going to be uh, patio. Does that change anything about the application at all? No, no. Okay, just to clarify, to make sure that's on the record too, that it's not the composite decking or whatever was discussed before. So it's gonna be a little bit different. Okay, no, other than that, there were no other questions. Oh, actually, is there any lighting changes? Anything to do with the lighting around it? No, there's no lighting proposed for it. Okay, very good, no other questions. Inez? No questions. Marcy? No questions, thanks. I have no questions. All in favor of the application as presented? I need 
to make the motion. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the second time I've done that tonight. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna just go for it. This is Inesting James. I make a motion to approve the application from 10110 LLC um, for addition of approximately 1340 square foot patio to existing office building and modification of existing parking lot layout at 281 Farmington Avenue as presented. May I have a second, please? No, Matt Pogs on the my second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstention? The motion carries the five sixes met. Thank you. The next business is Brian Pendergrast, second application. I know we have the uh, oh. Finch Land. Finch Land. Finch Land. Oh. Finch, all right, uh, I, I did not have this agenda. Finch Land Management Site Plan Application for Site Improvements at 145 Hyde Road. Good evening, Madam Chair. I'm Joe Williams. I'm a land use attorney with Shipman and Goodwin in Hartford. Proud to be here representing Finch Land Management. And um, I can't see everybody this second, but I should have with me, there he is. Tom Linden, our landscape architect is with me and he will speak in a moment. And uh, we also have in the meeting, Don Borowski and uh, Dennis Ryder from Norgren uh, IMI who uh, can answer questions if needed. I'm just gonna give a brief background and summary and then turn it over to Tom. Um, nor just by way of background, Norgren LLC owns 72 Spring Lane, where it operates under the name IMI Precision Engineering. And uh, Norgren has probably operated an industrial component manufacturing facility on that site in Farmington since the mid 1980s. And now it would like to expand in Farmington, which is not something I get to say every day about manufacturing facilities in Connecticut. Uh, but to that end, through Norgren's subsidiary, Finch Land Management, it purchased last October 145 Hyde Road, which is right across the street from 72 Spring Lane, and uh, would like to manufacture syringes and other products at 145 Hyde Road. Uh, Norgren will be adding 80 jobs at that facility. And it would like to get to work right away on interior renovations, which is the bulk of the project. It's just re refitting basically the interior of the building. Um, but we have submitted a site plan application to you because we're proposing some minor site work improvements, things like uh, replacing and shifting sidewalks, that sort of thing that Tom Linden will tell you more about in a moment. And we've uh, received a staff comment memo, which didn't really pose us any major issues, and Tom will touch on that in a moment. Um, so that's just very briefly my summary and overview. Unless there are questions for me, Madam Chair, I'd like to go directly to Tom Linden to give you a project overview and address the staff memo. Right ahead. Just make sure you unmute yourself. You're on mute, Tom, yes. You think we would know how to do that by now? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Every Zoom is a new problem. <laughs> yes, it is. Tom Linden, Linden Landscape Architects from Weathersfield, Connecticut. Thank you. Um, if you could start at the beginning of the plan set. Yep. So the next page, the survey. This is an actual survey from 2020. It's a current survey. The wetlands boundary that's shown on this plan was flagged by a soil scientist this year for this survey. So this is an actual survey of the conditions as they are today. Um, next plan. So the overall site plan basically shows, you know, shows the entire site. Um, we have the site plan checklist on there plus a calculation that we did for the impervious coverage uh, changes. Basically, the only thing in the site plan checklist that's really changing here, there, there's 
no additions going on to the building. So all the building setbacks are, are all the same, no change. Um, the building footprint coverage doesn't change. There's no additions to the building. The only change that happens here is the amount of paved area. So what we have is an increase of just under 4,000 square feet of, of pavement change. Uh, the requirement is 40%. We're, the existing site is 34.4. This raises it 1.4 to 35.8% coverage. Other than that, nothing changes in the, in, in the application checklist. Um, you can go to the next one. So the existing site plan I'm moving my mouse. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so the existing site plan, the, the area of work is mainly in front of the building along Hyde Road and along the east side of the building. All of the existing asphalt sidewalks in the front of the building will be removed. Um, there currently is no sidewalk along the parking lot to the east side of the building. We're gonna cut the pavement along that edge and on the next sheet, you'll see that we're gonna install a new sidewalk along that. So the vast, all of the site work goes on in the front of the building facing Hyde Road. Go to the next one, please. Thank you. So the existing site changes on the east side of the building along the parking lot. Our proposal is to install a sidewalk along that whole edge of the parking lot. The Eastern side parking lot is employee parking. The small parking lot on the west hand side is a visitors only parking lot. The, we're adding the sidewalk along, along the eastern side of the building, along the parking lot for staff to come from the parking lot, get onto that sidewalk and be, be able to access the two doors right where you just were. There's two new doors going in the east side of the building. That's an egress door. The one just below it is another, is, is the actual employee entrance to the manufacturing floor space. That's the vast majority of the backside of that building. Um, the new sidewalk from where the island is that we're creating that's shown in pavers on the Eastern side that goes up to the front of the building the front side of the building is office space. Um, we're gonna take that sidewalk from the parking lot. We're gonna go up to the area that we're creating inside the U-shaped area of the building that's all in a very dense hatch pattern unless you zoom in. That's all gonna be a new patio for employees. So the sidewalk comes up, the area the entrance to the office space of the building is just to the left of where your hand is right now. So that's all office space. That door and the door on the opposite side where the 12 foot nine inch dimension is, those are the entrances for the public, for visitors to come to the building. So that visitor's parking space, if you were coming, you would go to that parking space and be able to enter the main office space of the building. <clears throat> We're removing pavement that's there now, putting in decorative um, precast pavers. There will be planting you'll see later on. We're creating these two um, outdoor patios for employees and for visitors to have an outdoor space to go out and sit. Right now it's a mess of overgrown plants from the 1960s when the building was originally built. We're creating the, this paver outdoor area um, with low stone sitting walls. If you could zoom in just a little bit to there, yeah. So two low sitting walls and the brick paver patio areas to, to the bottom of this, to, towards the bottom of the screen, if you come down a little bit with your hand right there, that is that area is the lunchroom inside the building. So they'll be able to come out of that little door in the corner and be able to go outside and have lunch during the day on either of those two patios. 
If there's visitors in the office space and it's nice and they want to bring people outside, they'll have an outdoor space to, to sit. Um, if you scroll down the screen, you get to the back of the building. So the back of the building is the loading dock area where those four rectangles are. Um, loading dock into both areas of the building. We'll get to that a little later. And I'll show you where the dumpsters are and how the loading actually works. Along the back side of the building, we have a 12 foot bituminous paved area that we're adding in here. There's a single man door and then a set of double doors that gets you into the interior manufacturing space. The bulk of the interior manufacturing space is about two and a half feet below the floor level of the office space. So for an ADA accessible entrance at the office space, you come in there, if you're in that space, they have an interior chairlift that gets you down to this level. These entrances are employee only that would get you an accessible entrance directly onto that floor level. The double doors is there for, um, for them to use to move materials in and out with a small forklift. That's the reason for that paved area back there. Um, go to the grading plan. And go to the island along the east side. The, the island that we created with the pavers in it, right there. So we have handicapped parking spaces on either side of that island. Um, one of the comments in Bruce Sears' um, memo, and I talked with him today on the phone about a few things that I wanted to clarify and talk with him. That island, the way it is on this plan, is the outermost edge of the island is the area that's flush which would be along the driveway aisle. Bruce wants the entire island to, to be flush for the handicapped parking spaces so that somebody doesn't actually have to be in the travel lane, so to speak. And that's an easy thing for us to do. We're gonna, we're gonna do that. So there's our accessible entrance. Two handicapped parking spaces there get you ADA access to the main level of the building. The other handicapped spaces, there's one in the visitor's parking lot, and then we have three more that are at the mm -hmm. southernmost end of the site, and we'll talk about those later if you have, we'll, we'll look at those later. So back to the patio area, we have um, three small area drains in the patios to collect runoff. The Pavers will be on sand, not on concrete. So a lot of it will go into the ground anyway, but we have three small area drains, 24 inch diameter cover that we're piping out to put into a new dry well out in the lawn. Very sandy soils. So that'll handle that area of pavement. Um, there is an existing dry well just to the left of that. It's labeled as a catch basin, but that's that's a dry well that drains the entire front lawn area. It works really well. It's very sandy soils. That is our only utility improvement here is drainage for those two areas. Uh, let me just make sure I'm hitting everything. Um, there was a series of comments in Bruce's memo about inspecting all the existing drainage structures and pipes to make sure they're clean, make sure they function. We are definitely agree to all of those comments. They'll be, it'll be put on the plans that we will do that. If you go down, down and to the right, to the Southeast corner of the parking lot, yeah, that's good. So, at the corner of the building where you see a storm line and a manhole, it says painted storm line. And then there's a manhole in the middle of the parking lot that says buried and accessible, that's been paved over. And there's a pipe that goes out into the woods and it daylights in the woods. That is the drainage pipe for the roof drainage. It's not for the parking lights. It's the entire roof drainage goes out that pipe 
into the hill and daylights down into the woods. The entire parking lot area drains down to the corner that's just to the south of where that is. It doesn't show on this plan. It only shows on the, on the very first plan, but everything drains down to the southeast corner of the parking lot. There's no curb at a section of the parking lot there. It travels across a small grass area into a small swale that goes down into the woods and eventually into the wetlands at the bottom of the hill. That's the way it's been since this place was built in 1966. There are no improvements in this project to for the parking lot. So it's an existing condition that for lack of a better term, is the way it is. There's comments in Bruce's memo that we will look at that with town staff. We actually had a we had a bunch of emails going back and forth this afternoon. Town staff has asked permission to access the property and take a walk and look at all of this stuff in greater detail, and we will do that with them. I was out there again today. Last time I was there, it was in the winter and it was a little snowy. The, the runoff really doesn't cause any erosion in the woods until it's almost all the way down at the bottom of the hill. And that's taking into all of the adjacent property between where we are right now and all the way out to, to Hyde Road, which is a much greater area than what our parking lot is. So our intent and what Bruce asked for in his memo is that we look at the outlet to this roof drainage pipe and potentially add some riprap in that area. And based on the way the swale runs down to where that pipe is, if we clean that up a little bit and add a small um, stilling basin to slow the water down a little bit at that point and to hold the water that's coming out of that pipe, I think that'll solve the problem and help lessen the erosion downhill. Um, you can go to the next one, please. Planting plan. Planting is all basically around the front of the building, the new sidewalk up to the main entrance. Um, we're going to plant along the front of the building, the sidewalk that goes up to the entrance. We're going to plant along the patio, between the patio and the street. We're going to plant up the new visitor's entrance where the hand is now over on that side. Um, another comment in Bruce's memo was he would like to see some street trees along Hyde Road. I talked to him today about that. He was looking for three or four maybe good size shade trees on our property so that they're our responsibility, but we'll put those in front of the building along Hyde Road. There'll probably be, I'm thinking three along there and maybe one on the island at the driveway entrance off to the right hand side. But again, these are all things that I talked with him about and it's he's willing, to, it's a town staff thing that will review all this stuff and get it onto the plan for final approval. Um, and then beyond that, it's construction details. Um, do you have the pictures that I sent you this afternoon? I think they're in this stuff draft. This one. There we go. Yes. So I can first show the plan. Uh, let's look at the picture first okay. so you can see what it looks like. The one right below. There you go. So this is the loading dock area. So on the plan, we had shown four spaces for trucks to load. And apparently we didn't realize that one of those loading spaces right where the arrow points for where the dumpsters are going to go, that that door was actually closed off. So it's not really a loading space. It's a single loading dock to the building on that side. And then the recessed area has a single space that they can back up to and immediately get access to the door. Um, the, the idea is, is that we're going to have two 10 yard dumpsters, one for refuse, one for recycling. They're both covered. They will be removed twice a week, which is what they currently do at the facility across the street. And it works for them there. And they believe it will work for them here. 
Um, the idea is, is that we can put them in this corner in that location for the trucks to be able to get into them. They can bring the material outside the building out the door. Um, and that's where they would go. So if you click on the plan, yeah. So that's basically it. Where we had shown four loading spaces, there's really only two. We're only required to have one. Um, so I think if we put the two 10 yard dumpsters in that corner, we'll add that to the plan so that they're on there at the correct scale and size that they that they will be. Um, that basically is it for the site plan. Thank you. And just to clarify, this is uh, Catherine Kramer. Um, for the commissioners who have received the um, agenda review, I just want to clarify that staff has no objected objections to having any or all of the comments incorporated. Um, that was transmitted in Bruce Sears' um, memo mm -hmm. um, as a condition of approval. There was a typo in that sentence, and I just wanted to be clear. Staff has no objection to having any or all of these comments incorporated as a condition of approval. Other than that, that's our presentation, Madam Chair. Um, we believe with the comments that we've received and agreed to that the plan fully complies with the zoning regulations for site plans and for the CR zone, and we respectfully request your approval. Thank you. Patrick, do you have any questions? Um, well, I'll start off with a comment. 80 new jobs is exciting for the state of Connecticut, um, so that's good. Um, the only the only question I have is about the dry wells, which I'm sure Bruce is on it. Um, but if they, are, is there a way to maintain these things if they get clogged up with leaves? I know that all the soil in that area, that part of town is, or at least in that immediate area is sandy um, and they'll work really well. What happens if they do get plugged up and is there a way to maintain them? So the new dry well that we have, um, is sealed it doesn't it doesn't have a grate in the lawn for anything to get into it the only thing that would get into it would be whatever debris would go into those three small basins um it does have a buried it, in this case it has a buried manhole cover so periodically it could be opened up and inspected um we could also put a grate on top of it so you can see it but then you're allowing more debris to get into it the existing one that's just to the left of it is basically, it's a DOT catch basin. It just doesn't have an outlet pipe and it has a, it, it doesn't have a bottom slab so that any water that goes into it, it collects all the water from the lawn in that front area. All of the water that goes into it basically just seeps into the ground. So you can take the grate off and clean it out as needed. Right now it's basically just getting grass clippings in it. Um, but it's very easy to look into and see. And that's one of the things that will happen as part of the conditions of this approval that is being asked for is that we'll open that up, clean out any silt that's in the bottom of it that's been there for 40 years and, and it's probably got two feet of dirt in the bottom of it, it'll give you better capacity. Okay, yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I'm happy with that. I mean, it's if it's been 40 years. Maybe if it's cleaned, it'll go another 40 years, um, yeah. as long as there's access. Um, and then obviously if it was to back up, I mean, you would just notice it and then access it. So um, no more questions, just that that's it. And I'm happy with that. Thank you. Mike? No questions, thank you. Matt? So your property abuts um, the water company, is that correct? Correct. Okay. And uh, have they seen this plan that you have and the changes at all? Yes, they have. We, we, okay. uh, we submit the required notice to them and provided that to the planning office. Okay, were there any concerns that they had brought up in regards to these changes? They didn't say a word to us. Okay. Um, this is just outside of 150 feet from a wetlands, is that correct? Well, the, like, the existing parking area is, but where we're doing the work is more like 300 feet away, I believe, Tom. Yeah, if you go to the 
first page after the survey. That one. And there's a dimension right there, 330 feet from the Uplands Review area to the closest area of work, which is installing the curb on that little last end island. That's something that's asked for in the notification because we're in the aquifer zone for the water company. Okay. So although that's the closest work, nothing's being changed that's going to change the amount of water coming out from the pipe underneath the, under the road currently? Correct. Okay. And the only thing that you've spoken with Bruce about is trying to slow the water down that's already existing that's coming out that pipe. Correct. Okay. Um, as long as there are no other concerns, I suppose, from any of the abutting properties, um, it seems as if that was an existing condition as it was. Um, no, I, I suppose I have no other questions. It looks very good, though. Very nice work. Thank you, Inez. I have no questions. I am very happy, Catherine, you pointed out the wording because I, yeah, I was a little concerned why that was in, in the agenda review, but I'm good. Thank you. Marcy? Um, just to say that all of the contingencies and Bruce Sears' comments are part of the our approval because it seems like there's a lot that is changing in there. Sorry. So I, I just want to make sure that the, that gets noted because there was a, there were a lot of what seemed like open ends. It's... Scott. I'm going to recuse myself on this application, oh, Madam Chair. Pardon. That's okay. Keith? I have no questions. Thank you. John? No questions. Thank you. I have no questions. And it's under the title of, a, I need a motion for Finch Land Management to site plan application. This is Ines St. James. I make a motion to approve the application from Finch Land Management for site plan, um, site plan application for site plan improvements as presented at 145 Hyde Road, uh, working with the town staff. Have a second, please. Matt Pogs and I'll second. There's a motion and a second to approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Motion's carried. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll see you again in a little bit for your aquifer protection meeting. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Brian Pendergast, accept an application for special permit to raise poultry, six hens, at 14 Sycamore Lane and schedule a public hearing with a recommended hearing date of June 21st, 2021. I have a motion, please. This is Ines St. James. I make a motion to accept the application from Brian Pendergast for special permit to raise poultry, six cents, at 14 Sycamore Lane and schedule public hearing with a recommended date of June 21, 2021. I have a second, please. Matt Pogs and I second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Moving on to CLP <laughs> Farmington. Oh. CLP Farmington LLC accepted application for change of zone from BR to SIFZ and site plan approval for conversion of a hotel to apartment use at 15 Farm Spring Road and schedule a public hearing with a recommended hearing date of June 21st, 2021. I have a motion and a second, please. This is Ines St. James. I make a motion to accept the application from CLP Farmington LLC for change of zone from BR to SIFZ and site plan approval for conversion of hotel to apartment use at 15 Farm Spring Road and schedule public hearing with a recommended date of June 21, 2021. I have a second, please. Matt Pogson, I second. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Before I move on to the public hearing, I want to go back to number two or number three under new business, the Connecticut sign for three executive drive. Is anyone here for that application, please? Yes, my name is John Morrison. Can you hear me? We can. Thank you. I have your application on the screen um, and you are welcome to present. Thank you. So we're, we're requesting permission to install new signs for Cadence Academy. It's at an existing daycare. There's a monument sign that's existing. They'll be changing over same square footage to the new name. There's an awning on the building which is existing, which will be having uh, graphics added to it for the logo of Cadence Academy and for wayfinding for people going in and out. Um, there's lettering on the door that's existing below the awning. Then that directional sign that's it was just there, sorry. <laughs> that directional sign is new. Um, we did get confirmation that that does comply and that's just a wayfinding sign um, just to make it easier for the people dropping off their kids to pick it up. Okay, commissioners, questions, Patrick? No questions. Mike? No questions. Matt? It's actually just a personal question. Is this a rebranding or is this an actual different business than Joni's going in there? I honestly don't know. I know we've been doing signs for Cadence Academy, changing over existing daycares to this brand, um, but I don't know the ownership structure. Okay, no other questions. Thank you. I know. Sure. I was thinking the same thing as Matt end of an era my kids went to Joni's but uh yeah it looks like it's a swap so um no questions Marcy I have no questions Scott no questions Keith no questions John no questions okay I have no questions I, I shouldn't say that there is one additional new sign that's on the entryway is that correct on the canopy yep. Th that's the only new sign the brand or the logo going on the awning. The awning is existing. The vinyl lettering that, that shows the logo there is new. That's what and, I thought. That's the only I'll, change. And even that change, it still meets our regulations, correct? Okay, that, thank you. Right. And all of these are non-illuminated as well. Thank you. Thank you. You want me to make a motion? Yes, please. All right. Uh, Ines St. James, I make a motion to approve the sign application uh, presented by CT Sign for property located at 3 Eastview Drive as presented. Matt Pogs and a nice second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Now we're going to move on to a public hearing. Todd Savasky, application for special permit to raise poultry at 148 Plainville Avenue in an R12 zone. Todd, I have your application on the screen and you're welcome to present. Hello, can you hear me? We can. Fantastic, good evening everybody. Um, my name is Todd Zavatsky. Um, I just moved here to Unionville um, from New Britain with my family. Um, so glad to be here um, and part of the community. Um, I put in an application for a uh, chicken coop that we I had built um, back in New Britain prior to our move uh, last year in April. Um, the chicken coop um, is made out of uh, pallets uh, as a base and uh, has all um, studded two by fours and um, creating it uh, to be large enough to supply about 35 square feet, I believe is what it is, um, uh, which gives about each bird uh, five square feet, um, which is uh, two to three square feet above the uh, minimum 
uh, recommendation for a chicken. Um, the application is for a current uh, flock of six birds that we purchased from um, Murray McMurray Hatchery in April of 2020. Um, so they're fully vaccinated and vetted, et cetera. Um, and at the end of the day, um, they also have a attached uh, 10 by 10 by six um, run. Uh, the one in this picture um, is actually not the same one that was at the New Britain home. Um, the new one is a, a 10 by 10 by six uh, chain link uh, dog kennel that was converted. Um, to be adjacent to the coop um, to give them more than enough and ample uh, protection uh, and room outside. Um, all of their food and bedding are in uh, Rubbermaid uh, garbage cans that are lockable um, to prevent pests and apparently in this neighborhood bears and whatnot, <laughs> um, which I'm not used to from where we came from. Um, Get ready. I'm not, <laughs> um, with that, um, again, it's just the current flock of six birds. Um, there's no rooster. It's all hens. Um, not sure what else I, uh, I can really present to you besides that, but um, more than enough room inside and out for the birds. Um, all of their food and bedding is locked up and taken care of to prevent any uh, any animals or critters from visiting. Um, yeah. Any questions? Any questions from commissioners? Patrick? Um, and, and I'm assuming you talked to your neighbors. Anybody against this at all? Or No, not at all. Um, in fact, uh, with where we sit, we um, purchased the, the last house on the left before the um, little business district there in Unionville. Um, so we are, I, I guess, technically on the corner of Moses Place uh, and 177. Um, so our home, uh, there's no one to our left and across us is 177. There's two houses on Moses Place. Um, one of our neighbors, Brian, um, is already enjoying the eggs <laughs> um, and has no issues with it. Um, and the other neighbor, Paul, um, I haven't given him eggs yet, but he, he's come over a couple of times just to make us aware of some bear activity in the area uh, as recent as yesterday morning. So um, everyone on the street seems to be more than okay with it and just concerned for everyone's safety. <laughs> no more questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, that bear in the area was quite interesting the other morning. I agree with you there. Um, you said you had six chickens? Correct. We, we have six. Um, we've had zero plans on increasing that, um, but I understand that there might be room to do so in the future um, as far as the number of birds allowed in town, um, but the um, plans are to stay as is with the six. I don't really want any more <laughs> responsibility. Okay. And no roosters? Correct. There's no roosters. There was no roosters allowed in New Britain. Um, and when we purchased them from Marie McMurray Hatchery, we purchased sex chickens, um, all females. And you'd be comfortable with a one-year approval and um, coming back after that year, just ensuring that there's no neighbor complaints or any other issues? Uh, my only question, because this is all new to me, does that mean that I would go through like the whole uh, process of paying the couple hundred bucks and so on and so forth again? or? No, no, that is not part of the review. Got part. it. No, I'd be more than happy to come it's back. Just review. Yeah. It's just a review to make sure we don't have any complaints. Got it. Yeah, more than happy to uh, come back in a year. And at that point in time, I'm sure I can have something in writing or uh, verbal recommendation from the couple of neighbors I already mentioned, Brian and Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Matt? No questions. Inez? No questions. Marcy? No questions. Scott? No questions. Keith? No questions, thank you. John? No questions. I have no questions. This is a public hearing, so if there's anyone here that has logged in for this hearing and you'd like to speak, 
either in favor or in opposition to this application, please raise your hand on the Zoom so we can call upon you. Again, this is the public hearing is now open. Please raise your hand in the Zoom function and I will unmute you. Mm -hmm. I see no hands raised at this point in time. Hearing no comments. Is there anything else you'd like to add to your application before I close this public hearing? Todd? No, I appreciate all of your time. Thank you. I will close this public hearing. I'll bring the commission to uh, present a motion and a second on this public hearing, please. This is Ines St. James. I make a motion to approve the application from Todd Savaski for special permit to raise poultry at 148 Plainville Avenue, R12 zone, uh, with understanding that there will be no roosters and the permit will be revisited for renewal in one year. The Matt second, Hogs. please. Matt Hogs and then I second. All right, there is a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. Moving on to planner's report. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for your patience. So, um, 244, 248 Main Street, um, there are proposed minor changes to a site plan. The architect of the building on the screen has made modifications to the windows and present glazing in an effort to make a more energy efficient building and to do some minor tweaks to the design. Um, there are no changes to the building plan uh, excuse me, building size or site plan. The changes are solely for um, the windows. So I have attached, you can see that what was initially approved um, and here is what is being proposed now. So a decrease in the glazing and uh, window size. I did receive confirmation from the architect that the depiction of the windows here grayed out is just that it's different. They're the same windows. These ones are gray and these ones are clear, but in, in fact, oops, excuse me, I just zoomed by the tweaks. They are the same windows that they were originally thinking about purchasing. So it's it's not a different window. It's just the quantity of windows. Um, and so town staff is planning to manage this change administratively unless there are concerns um, from the commission. This is the Chase building, no? Uh, this is, at, no, this is not the Chase building. This Sorry. is 248 Main Street. I have no idea. Okay, hold on. Down just below, just beyond, just south of Highland Market. Yeah. Oh, okay. Main Street. Yep, got it. <laughs> on the map. Ooh. You want me to show you on the map? You can... It's the one that's next door to my parents' stand. Over okay, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Okay. Not directly next door, but. No, it's not next door. door. Meeting is going way too fast. <laughs> Over here. All right, any mm -hmm. other questions? Or, no, sorry, this is, it yeah, zooms in. Very, it's very, it's very you. crunchy. My mouse today is like, you do one zoom and it delays and then goes crazy. So <laughs> I'm a little all, all of us are a little, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, hearing no major concerns, I'll move on to the second topic, if that's all right. Yep. Um, the We have been working on the affordable housing draft plan and are looking for commissioner comments, I will be sending out um, a draft, God bless you. I will be sending out a draft um, after this meeting for you all um, to take a look at. We're anticipating setting the public hearing um, at the next TPZ meeting, which would mean that we would have our public hearing on the affordable housing plan um, in July. 
Thank and you for the heads up. Yeah, any questions? You can always email me. Okay. <laughs> um, we need to approve the minutes of the May 10th, 2021 Town Plan and Zoning Commission. I, I actually have a question and it, I'll be really quick. Um, I'm tired myself, but I just want to make sure um, that um, the staff is aware of this whole movement uh, to desegregate planning and zoning um, and make it more like a state function rather than town function. And it passed the house. It's on to the state. I just- uh, It's on to the Senate now. I mean, Senate, yeah. That's, yeah, I just wanted to make sure, like, sure, like you guys are following it too. And I don't know what the impacts will be. I'm sure at some point, possibly significant, but uh, I just wanted to make sure that we're, someone is following it. We are very much aware. Um, Rose actually has been uh, following it extensively. And I believe um, Kat has from the town manager's office. And then we've been uh, chatting with them. Uh, it's really at the town manager's level that they um, have provided input. There's um, a variety of groups that the town belongs to. One of them is a, a small um, small communities of Connecticut type thing. And so those town managers get together and, and provide a, a group letter uh, with their thoughts. So uh, yes, it's being watched and, and appropriate comments have been provided when the opportunity has presented itself. Thank you. Um, and I had, um, I guess the question, um, the whole GIS or uploading or indicating the different floating zones. Is that something that's possible to get done? So uh, is it, okay, so it, is it possible? Yes, you can create another layer on the GIS and, and layers can be added. The problem is until the zone change takes place and we have the public hearing to land the zone, that zone actually doesn't exist and can't, no one can do anything with it until you have the public hearing. So that's the planning document end of it and the POCD is posted to the website. I understand that many people don't look at a POCD as part of the due diligence, mm -hmm. um, but that's also why there is the public hearing process to allow for the, all the public comment and no different than if the town were to revamp the zoning map and you had designated this area and we did this, like there was a full zone change. You know, that's when the time that the, the maps are updated is at the time that the hearings take place. Mm -hmm. So my concern is misinterpretation and, um, and just misunderstanding of the information and how it would be used because it doesn't actually exist. It's a planning document. It's part of the planning document and, and guidelines and provides an ability in these areas. Um, but it's not actually there until you go through the zone change process. That's, mm, I, thank you. Um, and I see your point for sure. I, um, I definitely... Um, you know, I think it's, you know, it probably happens in all small towns until the first tree is cut and, you know, neighbor drives by and says, oh my God, something is going in here, even though it was planned and approved many years ago. That's unfortunately when people, you know, say things, but, uh, you know, I know how to get at the planning and uh, POCD documents and, and it, not, nothing personal, but they're not like easily, if you don't know the terminology, it, it, it's not easy to uh, finagle. Like, you know, find things that may impact you as a citizen. Um, you don't, do you think like getting them, you know, there are a couple of pretty good maps, but I understand it may create confusion or more questions for the staff, but uh, maybe like a map of town with, with these uh, different um, groupings. I, I don't know. I, I do feel something has to be done because it, it comes, I know it's human nature, but then they have to be easier, easier to find. Yeah, Inez, I'm happy to go through uh, the POCD and see which maps are currently public 
and on the website in that manner and think of, start thinking about, is there a better way to explain this information um, and communicate that to the public? I'm not sure at this point in time, I know of a, a straightforward, we can put this map up or we could put this layer on. There's a lot of nuance to this information and not wanting to confuse people. So if you don't mind giving me a little time to think about this and uh, try to come up with a way that approaches this with the delicacy of this, this floating zone and uh, figure out a way that we can help communicate that information to the public. Because I, I agree it's important for people to know and understand Thank you. Zoning, for but zoning is incredibly complex. Right, mm -hmm. for sure. Thank you for entertaining it. And yep. uh, if I think of a solution or I see another town doing it differently, you know, I will definitely share too. But uh, thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, feel free to uh, email me with uh, any suggestions, but I'll, um, I'll spend some time thinking about this. Thank you. Of course. This is Matt Pogson. Speaking of GIS, and this is totally off subject in some ways, but is there any way that I can have my property back on the GIS? Because my neighbor bought the property next door and 275 is now supposedly my property. Who do I reach out to to have that taken care of? My, my property doesn't exist on the GIS map anymore. I believe the assessor's office, because let's see, it pulls from the assessor's database. So the assessor's database was okay. incorrectly edited. No problem. It's interesting floating in, you know, limbo over here. But uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll reach out to them and have it taken care of. Thank you. That's interesting because that's not the only property. We Bruce and I stumbled a lot across one today that actually has an incorrect property owner. So, okay. I just hope that they don't start moving over here and taking over my property. They seem like <laughs> they're taking, but I don't want them taking advantage of me. Hey, maybe they'll pay the, if they yeah. pay the taxes, yeah, they're all set, man. Very true. I might not be objectable to that. Oh, goodness. All right. Can we all get right. a motion on the minutes? No, we didn't do that yet. No, it's, it's me. Sorry. Yeah, I thank you. I will do it gladly. Yeah. It's Ines St. James. I make a motion to approve the minutes from May 10th, 2021 Town Plan and Zoning Commission meeting. Matt Pogs and I'll second that. All in favor? Opposed? Aye. Aye. Abstentions? Motions carry. You are adjourned. No, no, no you're no, not adjourned. No. Nobody leave. We've Good got time. offer. Nobody sign off. <laughs> Nobody's leaving. <laughs> We're keeping you. It's all part of the Friday email for 145 High Road. So uh, it should be quick. So just hang tight with me, folks. Okay, so our friends, Attorney Williams, you still with us? Yes, I am. All right. All right, let's, uh, let's roll through this. I will start and then either you or Mr. Ryder, if he's still on, can provide a little uh, additional supplemental information. I think I'm just gonna go I'm going to talk while I'm uh, moving through the map to try to expedite this. So we're going to open the uh, Aquifer Protection Agency. And as was discussed, so this is the same, pro same property we just heard about. Um, and so you've heard about all the work they want to do now at 145 uh, High Road in its 72 Spring Lane is the, uh, the north portion of this, what they're referring to as their Farmington campus for, uh, for IMI um, precision. Hang on, gotta get a few things, zoom things out of the way here. All right, so um, the commission, TPZ also acts as our Aquifer Protection Commission as, I, uh, as was described in the uh, the email it out to you folks on Friday. So this is the sand and stone aquifer that runs along the southern portion of uh, Farmington. And actually a much larger portion of this aquifer uh, resides in Plainville. Of course, the aquifer does not just stop at the town line. Um, so 
uh, back in 2008, this aquifer was uh, first dedicated and the properties uh, solicited to make determinations as to whether or not they were conducting a regulated uh, activity. And if so, had the opportunity to be grandfathered in. Um, at that time, the owners operators of 72 Spring Lane submitted all the paperwork that were necessary um, and it did uh, register as a regulated activity for the uh, fabrication and machining of metal products. Um, also at that time, 145 uh, Hyde was a screen printing facility and based on the requirements for the Aquifer Protection Agency did not have to register. So this was back in 2008. So they were not registered. So now in 2000 and re-registration is required on a uh, five-year basis. Um, in 2016, the town reissued notifications when I came on board and uh, the owners at 72 Spring Lane submitted all their documentation and were re-registered. The ownership at that time at 145 had not changed. So there was no further paperwork sent to them. We are now 2021 and IMI Precision, one of their subsidiaries has purchased uh, the 145 Hyde Road. I have been in touch with uh, Kim Zapla at the DEP. Uh, Kim is my liaison when I have aquifer protection questions. And the issue, I discussed what was taking place that uh, I and I had the opportunity to purchase 145 Hyde and move some of their operations down to 145 Hyde. The issue and concern was um, when you, the corporations that were in place at the time in 2008 had the opportunity to register, as I mentioned, if they were uh, participating in a regulated activity. There's 28 of them and they were in the, uh, uh, your aquifer protection regulations were shared with all of you as part of the email on Friday. Um, very enjoyable weekend reading for all of you. But in there, under the definitions, discusses the regulated activity and also discusses facilities. Um, what happens is if a property that's in the aquifer protection area did not register uh, in 2008, then you lose that ability. It's not, it's not considered, you can't be grandfathered in. So 72 Spring Lane can be grandfathered in. And as long as the registration is kept up to date and all the documentation showing best management practices is kept up to date, they can continue uh, with their, their regulated activity basically in perpetuity. Um, in talking with Kim, I explained that 145 is across the street and the definition of facility includes land owned, leased, or operated that is contiguous to the parent land. Um, and then we get into is across the street considered contiguous. Uh, uh, Attorney Williams submitted documentation as part of their application, supporting their reasoning that contiguous um, does include properties across the street, and it in included uh, legal definitions as well as EPA definitions. Uh, Kim Zapla did confirm for me that there is nothing in the aquifer protection regulations or the statutes that discuss contiguous um, and did indicate basically it's at, uh, basically at the commission's discretion. Um, Part of the documentation that Attorney Williams included um, in his letter uh, had to do with really from a survey standpoint, would we consider this property uh, contiguous? And I had our town land surveyor, Rob Wadowski, take a look and read the letter and give me his thoughts. And he agreed that from a survey standpoint, the property would be uh, considered contiguous. So, um, so what is before you this evening then is an application to renew the certificate 
472 Spring Lane. And also with the modification to include 145 uh, Hyde Road. So the spring, the certificate for IMI precision now would include both properties, but just for that one regulated activity for the uh, production and machining of uh, metal or metal fabrication. Um, so that's what's before you. I know my agenda review included uh, some comments and that I had, had for the uh, applicant, those went out on Friday and to them as well. And they responded today. I'd have to say they addressed most of them. They've updated all the documents to ensure that it includes uh, both facilities by address and by nomenclature. They're referring to this, like I said, 72 Spring Lane as, as the Northern uh, Farmington North and uh, 145 as Farmington South um, with the intent that once they are closer to ramping up on 145 that the document will be updated, which is appropriate because these uh, spill uh, prevention plans and stormwater management plans are meant to be living documents and should be updated as practices evolve um, and as material storage areas evolve. So as they finalize the layout of the interior and various utility locations and storage areas, then those documents will be updated um, and they will provide them to me as we move along. Um, so that's kind of what's before you. Attorney Williams uh, or Mr. Ryder, do you have anything to add to this request? If I missed anything, please feel free to chime in. Just very briefly, hello again, uh, Joe Williams, attorney for Norgren and Finch Land Management. Um, that was an excellent summary. You didn't miss anything. I believe uh, we have complied with all the requirements subject to just updating the plans, as uh, Shannon said, when the uh, facility opens. And uh, I believe the opinion letter we gave you provides ample legal support for the agency to deem the what we now call the Farmington South side of the IMI campus to be part of the same facility with 72 Spring Lane for this purpose within the, the language of the affordable, the <laughs> Aquifer Protection Agency regulations. Um, so with that, it, that's our request and I don't, I don't need to repeat what, uh, I believe that was Shannon, I couldn't see you, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's repeat. correct, yeah. Okay, thank you. So no, it was, it, it, that was all accurate and, uh, We'd appreciate your approval and happy to answer any questions. Okay, so we can go to Commissioners, questions. do you have any questions? Starting with Patrick. Uh, no questions. Mike? No questions, thank you. Matt? Just curiosity really, uh, if this was not contiguous, what would be, what would happen in that, that circumstance? Uh, if it was not contiguous, so say it was a completely different unrelated corporation, and it was not contiguous, then they could not uh, move into this location and conduct one of the regulated activities. So they could come in and do like paper manufacturing, they could do other manufacturing and storage and industrial use, but they could not conduct one of those regulated activities. So by expanding it to this, does that make it now um, conforming to that from here on out? Does a grandfather at that point for any future businesses as well? It will, yeah. as long as the registration. So again, the five-year registration has to be maintained. And every five years, they have to provide updated uh, spill prevention plans and stormwater maintenance plans. Um, yeah. And if a new user comes in, that also comes in to me for a review. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted clarification. Yes. Inez? Um, I have no new questions. Uh, I guess, you know, we don't have an equifier issue. I don't know if you can even say that. But it just makes sense to approve, right? So it's included. Yes, yeah, so I'm not, from a staff standpoint, um, we, we haven't had historically had any issues with spill or contamination at 72 Spring Lane. Uh, there are longstanding uh, um, business within Farmington. I don't see why that would be any different here at 145. 
they've been very diligent in responding to the request, agreeable to have Bruce and I on the property. So I don't, um, I'm not foreseeing any problem. Thank you. Marcy? I have no questions, thank you. Scott? I'm gonna use myself from this piece as well. Keith? No questions, thank you. John? No questions. No questions. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we vote? No, we appreciate all your time and attention. We have a motion to approve new business, Johnson Avenue. This is the Aquifer Protection Agency agenda. Review and the acceptance of registration for 145 High Road Finchland Management LLC to registered users. And I'm going to add in the uh, uh, re registration for 72 Spring Lane, please. Thanks. <laughs> yep. So we're going to cover both of them in one meeting. Yeah, just. Um... Yep. Thank you. It's. Um... Ooh, all right. So. Um... I'm just one, uh, that's fine. I'm gonna, uh, this is Ines St. James. I make a motion to approve the application or the request from Finchland Management LLC um, to renew uh, 72 spring. Actually, I should probably go back, hold on. Uh, this is Ines St. James. I make a motion to um, approve the application from F Finchland Management LLC um, to re no, I'm see, it's too many words. To, you got it. I got it. Okay. To renew, You're good. go ahead. No, oh, I heard this. Okay. Uh, to renew um, uh, the existing registration at 72, a uh, property at 72 Spring Lane. Yep. With modification to include property at 145 Hyde Road. Yes. And read the rest of it. Johnson Ave. FIP, well, aquifer. No, that's okay. fine. We're okay. fine. Okay, good. Thank you. Sorry. You know, and as I was about to make the motion to say, why you, didn't you? You talked first, so I'll <laughs> second it at least for you. <laughs> Thanks. That was a mess. All right, there's a motion that. and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstention? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks. everyone. Thank you. Now you are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. I'm doing motions in Polish in the future. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. Yeah. Right. Bye, Bye, everyone. Have a good night.